All right, guys, here's a work through of the first day surface area assignment. We will be ramping up the difficulty of these considerably soon. So we need to get really good at these questions before we can do the tougher ones. Find the surface area. This implies total surface area of this rectangular prism. This is the one I was warning you about in the other video. If it's a rectangular prism, you get to pick the base. I will tell you that by default, most websites and textbooks choose the bottom to be the base. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to establish the bottom as my base. It's a 10 by 3 rectangle. The perimeter of that would be 26, and the area of that would be 30. If the bottom is my base, the height, the length connecting the two bases would have to be 4. So in this case, the height is 4. The total surface area will not change depending on which base you pick, but the lateral area will. Because right now, the lateral area are these vertical rectangles. And that will change. If we pick the front to be the base, that changes. So which base you pick does matter sometimes, but it won't matter for total surface area. I promise you can try it every way you want. But we plug in. So surface area equals pH plus 2B for prisms. The perimeter of the base is 26. The height is 4. And then two bases coming in at 30 each. So that would be 80 plus 24. That'd be 104 plus 60. This would be 164. And that's the answer to the first one. If it asks for lateral, you would they would have to establish which one's the base. I will tell you that most websites and books, when they say lateral, they are assuming bottom and top are bases, in which case the lateral would be 104 for this problem. The total and total and lateral for the prism of now this way we don't have a choice. The bases must be the triangles. And it's an equilateral triangle with a perimeter of 30. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work on the equilateral triangle. If the perimeter is 30, each side's 10. And we need to be really fast at these guys. We drop a height, we cut in half, it's five root three. Like you just need to know that pretty quick. It's gonna happen way too much. So the perimeter of this triangle is 30. The area would be one-half times base times height. Remember, it's the entire base. So that would be 25 root 3. So capital B is 25 root 3. And then the height, well, the height is the distance that connects the two. And they actually tell us in the problem that the height of the prism is 15. So we know that number is 15. So... We'll start, since we're doing both, well, I usually start with lateral when I'm doing both. The lateral would be pH, which would be 30, the perimeter of the base, times the height, 15. Well, that would be 450 for the lateral portion of this problem. Now, for the second part, the total surface area, it's going to be that number, 450, but then we have to add in two bases, 2 times 25 root 3. So that would be 450 plus 50 root 3. 450 plus 50 root 3 would be the total surface area. So let's get real good at those triangle problems. They're going to come up a lot. We're doing lateral and total of a cylinder this time. So the base of a cylinder is a circle. The radius is 4. So we need, it's the same, guys. It's still perimeter and area. It's just they call it circumference. So the formula for lateral is uh, 2 pi r h, right? That's the circumference times the height. So we need to know r and h for that formula. And they give us r and they give us h. So we just have it straight up. So the lateral Right? We know R is 4, we know H is 10. When I say H, if I drew the whole cylinder, H is the distance between the bases. That's the 10. So this would be 2 pi times the radius of 4 times the height of 10. That would be 40 times 2, that would be 80 pi. They already have the pi there, so we just write the 80. The total surface area is going to be the lateral plus the two circles, um, which would be 2 pi times r squared. 
I should have wrote that down somewhere. Total surface area is 2 pi r h plus 2 pi r squared. So we already did that part. That was 80 pi. Now we're going to add two bases. So this would be 80 pi plus 16 times 2 would be 32 pi. And that would clock in at 112 pi. And they already got the pi there. So there's the lateral and total of the cylinder. Okay, pyramids are going to be the toughest for most people. It says find the lateral and total. I'm going to write those formulas right at the start. The lateral and the total. The lateral is the same first piece, right? It's that pH. Um, they tell us that the base edges are 10. They tell us it's a square pyramid. The lateral edges are 13. So to be, so we got to remember our parts. Lateral edge is from the apex to the corner. That's called a lateral edge. That's my 13. And they want this number. So the formulas require us. I am so sorry. I wrote the wrong formula. I was like, what am I doing? Sorry. Sorry. Lateral would be 1 half PL. And total would be 1 half PL plus 1 base. This is a pyramid, guys. Woo! I don't know who messed me up. There's nobody in the room. But I'm sure one of you guys messed me up. That was not my fault. Okay. I'm just kidding, of course. It was totally my fault. Um, we need a few things to do this. We need P, we need B, and we need the slant height. Well, P and B, the base are both based off the square. The square is 10 by 10. So the perimeter of that's going to be 10 times 4, 40. And the area of that's going to be 10 times 10, 100. So we know this is 40 and this is 100. The only thing we're missing is the slant height, which, if you recall, goes down the middle of the shape. And I'm going to show you my, my little guy here again. So we know the hypotenuse. We know the entire base edge. We need this line. We need the slant height. There is a right triangle here that we're going to work on to get the slant height. I hope you can picture this. So this right triangle would be 5, right? Half the base would be 5, a hypotenuse of 13. That's a 5, 12, 13 triangle. So we have all the pieces now. So lateral surface area is going to be 1 half times P times 12. And that's going to be 6 times 40. That's going to be 240. The total surface area is going to be that 240 number plus one base. One base is 100. That's going to be 340. There's my total surface area. So hopefully that made sense to you. We're going to do number five here. We've got a cone, and they labeled it so nicely for us. They won't always do that, but we have a height. Oh, that's all they gave us, actually. So we need the lateral, which is 2 pi. Nope, it's a cone. I'm messing up again. It's pi r l, and the total is pi r l plus pi r squared. So, the lat So what do we need? We need r and we need l. That's those are the only two letters in these formulas. R they gave us at six. L is going to be based off this right triangle. Here's the slant height right there. So if we have a right triangle with 6 and 8, that's a 3, 4, 5 triangle. 3, 4, 5, that's going to be 10. So the slant height is 10. So let's do our two situations. We have a lateral that is pi times 6 times 10, which is 60 pi. And we have a total, which is 60 pi. That's the lateral we just got. Plus 1 base would be pi times r squared. So that'd be 60 pi plus 36 pi, clocking in at 96 pi. All right, guys. Like I said, we're going to definitely crank this up considerably. You need to know the difference between total surface area, lateral area, lateral surfaces and bases, slant heights and lateral edges and heights. Woo, a lot of stuff that you really need to know. I'll see you.